Hello, everybody. My name is Marcus Conti. I'm an investigative journalist here on YouTube. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching my show. So Jeffrey Epstein back in the news today, right? Jeffrey Epstein. We got to talk about it one more time. This is big, man. So one of the best theories I know in in this um, when a story like this breaks, everybody's trying to figure out what the hell is going on, right? Now the the theory that Jeffrey Epstein is a billionaire and a hedge fund some kind of hedge fund monger has, uh, is widely disputed right now in the hedge fund manager uh, Wall Street uh, circle of people that do that kind of business because the, the, the shit doesn't add up. So I found a very interesting article. We'll, uh, we'll poke some holes in, in his theory. We'll take a look at his, uh, some footage just came out about pedophilia island. We'll take a look at what the island looks like. So uh, so here is, let me get to that here. Let's jump right in. So this, this story, uh, thank you, Susie Elgin for bringing it to my attention. This is a great story. Best theory yet that I've seen floated on who Epstein is and how did he amass all this money and, uh, and how, to what, to what extent the pedophilia ring, uh, extends. So Epstein was running a blackmail scheme under the cover of a hedge fund. New York Magazine reports on Wall Street speculation. All speculation at this point. There's no, no you know, solid evidence. But the people that are going to say what they're going to say is very revealing. So pay attention to this because I certainly am. So convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein claims to be a billionaire hedge fund manager. But his real business may have been a blackmail scheme that could end up implicating many of his powerful friends. <laughs> Maybe Bill Clinton will roll. Maybe, maybe, maybe. <clears throat> Quote, given this puzzling set of data points, the hedge fund managers uh, that we spoke to lean towards the theory that Epstein was running a blackmail scheme under the cover of a hedge fund. Uh, New York Magazine reported, we'll look at that one too. The magazine spoke with multiple Wall Street insiders for the story, including Douglas Kaz of Seabreeze Partner Management. I'm hearing about the parties, hearing about a guy who throws money around Cass, who lives in, a, in, in uh, Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, I went to my institutional brokers. Listen to this, right? Here's a guy who does this kind of business. I went to my institutional brokers, to their trading desks, and asked them if they ever trade with him, Epstein. I did, I did it a few times until, until the date uh, when he was arrested. Not one institutional trading desk, primary or secondary, had ever traded with Epstein's firm. Now, that is unbelievable. That is Bernie Madoff all over again. Right? It's not to say that it's a Ponzi scheme. It's not to say that, that, the, that he doesn't actually have a fund. But the, but the idea that he has a hedge fund where he's going in and out of stocks, you know, generating millions and billions of dollars is is unrealistic and, and probably impossible, right? So how is he making the money? Listen to this. How did he get the money? Koss kept investigating. I don't know anybody who's ever... Inve it, the, the point is that to be a hedge fund guy, you have to work with institutional traders. You've got to... You, you can't... Unless you're some kind of genius sitting at the table, there's no way you're going to amass billions of dollars trading on your own uh, while you're down, you know, while you're in your you're on your massage table talking on the phone with a teenage girl, you know, rubbing your shit, right? It's not going to happen. Right? So I don't know anyone who's ever invested invested in him. He's never talked about by any of the allocators. A billionaire hedge fund manager told the magazine, Koss was one hedge fund manager who emailed around the Twitter thread, explaining how the blackmail would work. Right? This this is brilliant. Listen to this. So we'll go through it step by step. It's like a bunch of tweets. So, so uh, I just want to make sure you can see it. So, so apologies in advance. I, uh, but I do not want a uh, quick little thread. Do a quick little thread to explain my theory. All right. So, so here it is. Number one, let's take our starting point points to givens. Right. A, you are you are a committed, unrepentant pedophile, right? That's, that's check. Two, because of your old job in a private banking, you are very connected to lots of wealthy, very, very wealthy people. Uh, well, also, we'll also assume, C, 
you want to become rich. So Epstein checks all those boxes. He's a committed pedophile. He, he had a, a career at Bear Stearns. I had a short career where he was suddenly bumped up to a partner and then uh, fizzled out. Bear Stearns ultimately collapsed. Right, so, so he checks all those boxes and he wants to become rich. He's not rich yet. Also, he was a math teacher at some point. He doesn't even have a college degree. That's prior to it. But this is more important, the, the fact that he worked at Bear Stearns and he had the connections. The obvious route is, well, obvious. You, you could just be a pimp offering underage prostitution services to very rich, rich people. This has two problems. You're very disposable. And it's also not super lucrative. You can't charge millions of dollars up front. Right? Makes sense, right? So he's not a pimp. Right. The, the, the number three. The second level, though, follows instantly. You don't need to charge up front. Just get them to have underage sex and then blackmail them afterwards for hush money. Better, uh, RO, better ROI, I don't know what that means, but, but you're still a liability and producing and receiving big bribe money uh, raises big questions. So he's not just out and out bribing, right? He's not, he's not getting billionaires to have sex with under, underage children, right? Uh, and, but he's, 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 getting, he's getting them to put money somewhere. Watch how it unfolds. So what do you do? Well, the second idea has some merits. First, you need to recruit people in. Have lots of massive parties at your spacious home. Check. Invite top academics, artists, politicians, and encourage people to come back. Check. <laughs> and supply lots of young women. Check. Right, so that's what, that's what Epstein does, right? Lolita, Lolita Express in the air. He's got his island down in the, in the US, U.S. Virgin Islands. <laughs> U.S. Virgin Islands. It's no pun intended. Uh, he's got his house in France. He's got his, his uh, shit in Manhattan and New Mexico. You don't even need to do anything. You don't even have to do anything. And most people invited might even uh, be totally unaware of the real purpose of the party. That's true. They think they're going to a rich executive party. But sooner or later, some billionaire will get handsy. She'll escort him to a room with a hidden camera. Things happen. Morning after, boom, you strike. Right? That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. You inform him she was really 15. Age of consent in uh, New York is 16, I believe, uh, in... in, in um, Age of consent uh, in U.S. Virgin Islands as well, 16. Uh, I'm going to talk about the age of consent worldwide because this isn't the, the reason why this story isn't getting getting a lot of uh, press, you know, globally is because some some countries the minimum age the, the the age of consent is 13. We'll take a look at those to ensure nobody else asks questions. You also take the extraordinary. St oh, so I, I forgot a, a line. You inform him he was really, the girl was really 15, but you offer him a nice, neat way to buy your silence. A large allocation to your hedge fund. Pow. Which charges 2 to 20, whatever that means. To, to ensure nobody else asks questions, you also take the extraordinary step of demanding power of attorney. <laughs> Which means you give, you're giving Epstein full power over your money, he doesn't need, you don't need to ask he doesn't need to ask you for permission to move money around to withdraw to allocate right? extraordinary you don't do that the fund is offshore in his tax haven check and nobody will see the client list check right these are all all things that he's done of course you don't really know anything about investing instead you uh, instead making up some nonsense about currency trading check and nobody on Wall Street ever traded with you. That's, it, it does look like that kind of a scheme. The fund itself doesn't need uh, investment personnel, only some back office people to process the wires. Right? All these are checks. These are all the things that appear to be what Epstein was doing. You don't want, uh, you don't want money from non-pedophiles, or they'll notice you've just put the money in the S&P 500 fund. So you reject all inquir incoming inquiries. Wow. So that means his whole list of hedge fund, the money that he claims he's taking from billionaires, 
it would indicate that all of those, under this theory, that all of those billionaires are compromised in, in some way, in this exact way. Because <laughs> nobody in their, no billionaire in their right mind is going to give some, some kook, you know, some money grabber from New York, some fucking, you know, math teacher, a billion dollars. So how does the money flow? How does he make money, right? So the billionaire puts some money in, in his theoretical hedge fund, right? But, but you can't touch that, right? Legally, you can't touch it, right? Maybe, maybe you can. Maybe that's what he's doing as well. Maybe Epstein is not only taking the bribe money, but he's also taking the money that the billionaire puts in what he thinks is a hedge fund and just spending it outright because he has power of attorney, right? And he has, comprom- he has the billionaire compromised. So what, what's the billionaire going to do? Turn around and say, hey, you stole my billion dollars. And, and, and then a, a, a kiddie porn picture pops up and a video of him screwing a 12-year-old, right? It's, it's, it's a brilliant play, right? I mean, it's very devious, and he should hang, hang by his testicles for doing it, but uh, because he's not only victimizing the kids that are victims of this, but he's also playing a shell game with billionaires. A, 20, uh, a $20 million wire from billionaire X to you with no obvious reason will raise many questions, and the IRS will certainly want to know where the money came from. A $5 million quarterly fee for managing $1 billion in assets? Not nobody bats an eye. So he sets up a fund. Maybe he puts the money in treasuries. Maybe he puts it in the S&P 500. Who knows? Maybe he puts it in his pocket and pretends that the money's there. We don't know yet. But, you know, the, the, the other flow of money, the, the millions of quarterly management fees, um, wouldn't bat an eyeball, right? That's how, we, that's how he's making his money. Because of this structure, you're extraordinarily secret about the client list check because they aren't clients. They're pedophiles paying you bribes, and they are also very secretive, which is why no letter of return streams, uh, streams ever leak. Wow. Nothing, right? It's just like Bernie Madoff, right? In fact, Bernie Madoff, the people that, that knew that they were getting screwed were embarrassed by the fact that they got screwed, and that kept them silent. Like, I can't believe I gave this guy my fucking $2 million and there is no, there's no equity, under, there's no underlying equity. It's just he's putting in his pocket and generating fake account statements. That was Bernie Madoff. But this, this could be different. We haven't seen it all yet. Occasionally, you may also try this trick on other people, important political figures, mayors, prosecutors. They don't invest in the fund, but it's nice to have them in your pocket. Others, academics, artists can just be bought with money as a PR smokescreen. Wow. What a, what a diabolical scheme, really. And this is the hedge. These guys that work on Wall Street can see it, right? Because it doesn't, his, his saying it to the public, oh, I'm a billionaire hedge fund is one thing. But when you say it to people, institutional traders and institutional investors that handle billions of dollars, they know the, the, how difficult it is to amass a billion dollars. So, and of course, the scam can be uh, kept going as long as people are willing to pay, which is forever. If you're ever caught, just lean on some of your other friends in government to lean on the prosecutor to get you a sweetheart deal. <laughs> there's, there's almost no risk. Wow, right? We just saw that with Acosta, right? That they, somebody leaned on him. Maybe they lied to Acosta, said, hey, oh, yeah, he's intelligence. He's intelligence. Let him go. And he got his sweetheart deal. And finally, the last piece of the puzzle is the evidence. You'd want it somewhere remote, but accessible, a place the U.S. can't touch, but you have an excuse to visit all the time to update. Remember that offshore fund? <laughs> I bet there's a very interesting safe deposit box there. Hmm. So, oh, there's more. Oh, there's one more. Two small points of clarification. One. This scheme works just as well if the billionaires are in on it from the get-go as a way to buy sex, assuming that was obvious, uh, assume that, I assume that was obvious. Well, it's not really obvious. Why would someone buy into a sex ring for a billion dollars when they can get on a plane and go to Thailand for, you know, two days and where the age of consent is 13 or Indonesia where it's 13, right? Why would you want to go? Or, you know, some other, some other sham country where what they're doing is not actually illegal. And number two, there's no need to invoke mafia, Russia, Mossad, CIA, deep state. That's, that's just needless overfitting. 
See, number two is big because I know the theory, everybody, all the conspiracy theorists, the, the conservative right that wants to pin everything on a, everything's a con, you know, conspiracy theory, wants to say Mossad, he's CIA, he's got FBI ties. Well, maybe not. Maybe it is something, as it usually is, something rather simple where the guy is like diabolically compromising very rich people like Bill Clinton, for example. So there's other, there's another, this is the uh, origin of the article from the, I think it's uh, intelligence or, I don't know, but it's an interesting story, right? It's an interesting um, theory. Uh, so let's look at, I want to, I want to just talk about the age of consent. So that's the theory. I, I'm, I'm leaning in that direction that that could, it, it could actually be what's going on uh, in this case. And, and again, Monday, tomorrow, today is uh uh, in, in, in reporting this, it's July 14th. Tomorrow is July 15th, Monday. There will be a bail hearing, and we shall find out what... Uh, if, he's let out of, if he's let out on bail, then the evidence will get destroyed and, and such. My prediction is that he will not be, not be released. So, age of consent. Now, this puts a bad taste in everybody's mouth as I take some <laughs> a peppermint. Um, because pedophilia in America, by law is anything under 16. Now, again, he's not, there's no evidence that there's babies involved, young toddlers, five, seven, 10 years old. This is age of consent of, in, in many countries, 13 and above, 13. Right? So in our great country, in our great nation, the age of consent is 16, I believe. I think the, the federal age, I think it, like in New York, it might be 17, I, I don't know. It varies, maybe as high as 18. But for the most part, 16. So anything under 16 is considered a, a shame, a taboo, and a pedophile. Right? So age of consent, 13 to 14. In Japanese penal code, legal age is 13. Right? In 32 countries, including Albania, Austria, Bangladesh, Bolivia, Brazil, China, Italy, Urethra, Germany, Hungary, Myanmar, Colombia, uh, Colombia, and Portugal, the age is 14 years of age. So, so just, I mean, I'm not, I'm not justifying it. I'm not, I'm not saying that Epstein isn't a creep because he's breaking the law in our country. But if these incidents had happened in Italy, for example, and the girls were 14 and 15 and 16, it wouldn't be an issue, right? And, you know, that's, you know, Milan, that's why a lot of the top agencies, top modeling agencies in the world set up in Italy because... They can operate out of Milan where the children are very young and they could sex them up at 14 and 15. By the time they hit 16, they're already, they're already um, uh, in touch with their sexuality, right? Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that that's the way to go. I'm just saying I'm pointing out the fact that that's the way it is. If, you've ever had, if you actually own, have a passport and, and, and you've actually traveled outside of the country, you, you might come to realize that. I realize that a lot of people don't travel and don't, don't understand the way the world is. Like in Thailand, I taught in Thailand. Consent there is 13. So not only, not only is the sexual age of consent 13, but you actually have people indenturing children to, you know, resorts or where they take, they got four children. They say, okay, you can have one child. And the child is indentured to the, to the uh, like enslaved, really. You're, you're, they sell off their kids in, in many countries, right? So is it frowned upon? Is it a bad thing? Well, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not here to discuss the, uh, the ethics of it. I just want to point out the ages. So age 17 to 18, that's uh, some countries, Vietnam, Rwanda, age 19 and over. So here's the, here's the actual ages. And you go down the list, right? It's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty interesting. Afghanistan must be married. Albania, 14. Uh, uh, Al Algeria, 16, 16. Uh, Angola, 12. Wow. Right? So, 14. O Austria. Wow, Austria in Europe, age 14. How about that? So, where else? Bangladesh, 14. Bolivar, 14. Bur Burkina in Africa, 13. Uh, Burma, Myanmar is 14. Right next to Thailand, that's 13. Cambodia, 15. Africa, 16, 16, 14. Let's look at some other low ones. Uh, Comoros, Comoros, 13. 
All right, so you see all these, all these, um, the age of consent in these countries. So why did, why would a billionaire not want to just travel to these countries and do their dirty deed and come home? And is that, that's always the thing that, that strikes me as ridiculous. Well, I mean, again, a guy like Epstein is giving it to them on a silver platter. It's so, so glamorous and so beautiful, right? But nonetheless, in all of the properties that Epstein owns, uh, they're all U.S. with the exception of France. Um, A, B, C, D. Where's France? What's the age of consent in France? A, B, C, D, E, F, F, France. So the age of consent in France is 15. Ah, so... So he has a home in France. So any business, any hanky-panky with underage girls 15 and over um, would not be illegal under na international law. So there's a couple of 13s, a couple of 12s. There's uh, for Portugal, 14. Talked about that one. What else? What else? What else? So pretty, pretty interesting stuff, right? So let's look at Epstein's... Um, let's look at Pedo Island, man. This shit's crazy. Here's the island. I'll shut, the sound, I'll shut the sound off. I don't want to get struck. So, so there's the island. Somebody went in there with a drone. Now we're approaching. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now approaching Pedo Island. Fasten your seatbelts for the ride of your life. Ladies and gentlemen, you're, I'll be your moderator for this evening at Harry Ponds. Sit back. Enjoy the ride. Fucking Petal Island, man. Right? That's pretty cool. So you see some houses. It's a nice island, right? For one guy to own. There's other islands around it. That's interesting, right? Surrounding islands. I think Puerto Rico is three miles away. It's got some whack art. Check this out. Right? It's fucking... It's like some voodoo, uh, voodoo thing going on here, man. Some like a, a a sundial, sundial, right? It's got little benches on there. Maybe it's like some evil fucking satanic shit. Who knows, man? Some high, high, high level Jewish fucking tarot Torah. <laughs> I think this is a landing, a landing uh, pit for a helicopter. One would think right, where you'd land a helicopter. So, you can see the, the, this is interesting. Here's the Temple of Doom. He's got a, a Jewish habab, habib, So, so come on. So, you got a temple going on here. He's got some pedo temple, man. Fucking shit's dope. Dope, dope, dope. What else we got? Here's more of the temple. I get copied. Hacked. Copy hack. Hacky hack. Ah, man, look at that shit, man. Some, it's like the temple of sin. The temple of doom. <laughs> what else? You go here, yeah, you're welcome in, but you can't get out. It's locked from the outside. Locked. Uh, and there's all the, um, I guess that's probably where the civilization part of it is. You travel up the, the Temple of Doom. What a fucking, what a ripoff, man. This guy's like living large. Look, he's got pools and all kinds of shit, palm trees. Uh, this shit is dope, man. Guy's living large. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another. This is good, good work, whoever got these, uh, whoever got these drones. You can see the address down below if you want to see him yourself, watch him yourself. You can watch yourself. This is interesting, too, because there's actually, when, when the drone is there, you could see a car moving. There's people, this is a body, this guy walking, two people walking right there, a car moving off the boat. Beautiful blue water, speed boats. All right, so you can access the island, I'm told, either by car, I'm not, not by car, by boat or flying a heli in a helicopter. So... So, Marcus Conti reporting on uh, Jeffrey Epstein. I don't know. What do you think? Is it a is it a compromise ring? Are billionaires compromised, and then and then um, they give into this fund because they don't want to be exposed as pedophiles in the United States, 
right? Is it is it possible? Is it something that Epstein could pull off? Eh, it does it does look like it. So, I mean, I'm leaning on this theory as probably so far it's the best one that it's the best one that I've heard. What do you think, man? Marcus Conte reporting. Please become a Patreon. We are now in a dire need for you to become a Patreon of this channel for a little as two dollars a month, guys. Come on, man. Join me. Join me, please. I'm begging you. Join, become a Patreon, right? Yeah, it's a two dollar, two dollar thing. I send you free stickers. You're getting the best of me anyway. Just you know what I'm saying? You send you send you do two dollars, you pledge two dollars, every two dollars. You don't have to think about it anymore. Right? We get a couple hundred people doing that. At least I can I could survive here and I don't have to sell my ass because my ass is killing me, man, with all this fucking, you know, side work. Shit is getting painful, man. Really. So so you know, become a Patreon. I really I really uh, appreciate that one time contributions. Thank you to the people that have. I, I know who you are. I keep your anonymity anonymous. <laughs> um, okay, Marcus Conte reporting. 